Well, here I am again, back on the job after a long, hot summer. That's a pretty baffling statement, huh? <laughs> and I'm ready to start my 12th year on You Bet Your Life. Did you know that, George? I uh, yes, 12 years. Yes. One more year and I'll get my mitzvah. <laughs> Well, didn't the cashew object to being called an otter if it was a fruit? Well, it objected probably in, uh, in the fruity world, but you see... <laughs> well, I must say, I've, I've strayed a little far away from... <laughs> what kind of modeling have you done, Grace? Well, I used to model stockings in Cuba, and I've modeled coats. Do you wear uh... stockings in Cuba? <laughs> No, but I just modeled. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, just thought they wore coconuts down there and, uh, and frozen daiquiris. I, uh... I had a frozen daiquiri once when I was up north. <laughs> huh? Last time I go out without long underwear. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Paul? I'm afraid to talk to him. He'll stand on his head again. I used to model maternity clothes about a month you, ago. You modeled what? Maternity clothes. Maternity clothes? Well, anybody can model maternity clothes. Well, he couldn't, for example. <laughs> I tried it once, and I was a complete failure. But he had an old battleship during oh, the Mr. Japanese. Well, he's had many an old battleship all day, huh? <laughs> I mean, when he was single. <laughs> oh, you're terrible. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm not only terrible, but revolting. No, no, I don't agree with that. Big, luscious, blonde like you and not married? No. Are you interested in matrimony? Not necessarily. Well, that's a different joke. I know that. <laughs> now, Muriel, could you explain that joke to me? Uh, apparently, I'm more English than he is. <laughs> or you are. What did he mean by that? Uh... Well, um, Robinson Crusoe was tri shipwrecked on a desert yes. island. And, and my um... kid told me that. <laughs> And when he got there, he met um, a man and became bosom friends with him. And then... Um, man was a bosom friend? <laughs> he was that's a very a, good friend. That's quite a trick. <laughs> no wonder he stayed on that island so long. <laughs> he might have been there yet under those conditions. <laughs> now, would you mind starting all over again? Huh? The first thing you notice is that I think Don't the American think works cute? a lot That's harder than adorable. anybody else. You know, he's huh? adorable. You think he's adorable? I love that beard. <laughs> no, I, I think he'll give it to you later on. <laughs> Would you part with this if she wanted it real bad? It depends how badly she wanted it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, in that case, would you part with it? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Shall I get on? <laughs> I want you to lay down on the bench. That's what I want you to do. Huh? <laughs> I think you better right now. I think you're a mind reader. That's what I think. <laughs> lay down. <laughs> Why not? Lie down. Excuse me. You know, in the average American home, there are so many frozen dinners that even the housewives are getting frigid. <laughs> I better stop after that, I guess. But <laughs> well, this is your partner, Rene. Now, good luck to you both. Who was the barbarian conqueror known as the Scourge of God? Scourge of God. S C O S C O U R G E. Scourge. 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 <laughs> Scrouge of God. What's the difference? They don't know it anyhow. <laughs> they don't know it and I can't pronounce it. <laughs> it's a real classy quiz show we have. <laughs> You go on one of those big uh, quiz shows and they don't mispronounce anything. But they give you entertainment. Damascus? What's that? Damascus? Damascus? No, Damascus are down in Hollywood. That's a theatrical club. Now, the, uh, 
The Hasento Mount oh. Monument. That's what it says here. Hasento. <coughs> it says Hasento. Oh. oh, the San Hasento. Isn't that Jewish? Hasento. <laughs> You can't give them questions like this. These people don't know any Jewish. <laughs> Have you met Mr. Dwan? He just became a father. Again. All right. Uh, I'll have, you'll have to go to some uh, number that I can pronounce here. Huh? The San Hasanto Monument. Is that all right? Well, there are uh, two lines that appeared originally and looked uh, called guessing game. It's hard to know what to deduce from girls who wear their sweaters loose. Oh. <laughs> now, did you get uh, much comment on that uh, poem? Well, I had a good deal uh, from around home, and I did have one reaction which came from a dean of a, an Eastern college. And he said he liked my two lines very much, but he thought two other lines should be added. Said that uh, you sometimes can't be sure you're right, even when they wear them tight. <laughs> well, there's a lot more things going on in college than I ever thought. <laughs> Pete, are you married? Yes, I am. You don't so. subscribe to her philosophy at all, do you? I ca I've been at it 33 years, and I think You've it's been at it? Well, that's a kind of a... He must be worn out by now. Uh, uh, <laughs> you say you've been at it for 33 years? That's one of the earliest descriptions of marriage I've ever heard. <laughs> I have a line which we can't use. Yeah. <laughs> no, the line is that a man is as young as the women he feels, but... Uh, <laughs> that's, that's her groucho. You're gonna be censored at that right now. <laughs> you say uh, that you feel like a kid? Like a teenager? Oh, yeah. And then we could go split a Coke, and then after that, maybe I'll let you ride tandem on my motor scooter. Baby well. Tanner won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, I'm going to be censored. Uh, well, I think you should. We'll go down to Wheeling, West Virginia, and do this. Huh? <laughs> well, didn't you say your wife was going with a guy who was in the can at the moment? No, what was he, he doing in the poker? There wasn't a can. It was the jail, the county <laughs> court. You may not be aware of it in Texas, but in up here where we live, in California, can is a euphemism for the jail. Is that clear now? Not quite. No. <laughs> well, I don't understand it either. Well, now, suppose you became a famous actress and then you met somebody you liked and got married. Would you be willing to quit acting and be a housewife and a mother? Well, I think if you keep your feet on the ground, you can combine both. That's what I would like to do. Well, if you keep your feet on the ground, you'll never be a mother. <laughs> That's what they call a waste of film. Get back to decent dialogue. This conversation is getting filthier all the time, you know. There's a commercial going on now. Which gives you an opportunity to go to the bathroom. How do you feel about your honeymoon trip? Would you say it was a success? Uh, by this time, you were fully dressed, I imagine. Huh? Yeah. Well, it was a very, very uh, nice trip, Groucho. Uh, the four of us took off, and uh, we saw a lot of nice country. No, you did that, didn't you? Well, it was 
take another couple along. <laughs> this fella has a strip obsession. <laughs> now we're on the same side. It's certainly a pretty filthy crowd out there. <laughs> Okay. What do you say? San Jacinto. San Francisco. Huh? <laughs> San Francisco, that's near California. California. <laughs> San Jacinto Monument. The San Jacinto Monument. It says Hazento here. <laughs> the San Jacinto Monument is the tallest in the United Snakes, the States. Now, in what, in what state is it located? How popular are your books? Well, I can only say that up until last week, I made the bestseller list of the New York Times, but they kicked me out this week. I got, <laughs> wait a minute, I got to tell you a story, speaking of loose. I was at a dinner party one night, out in <laughs> Bel Air someplace, and my dinner partner was Claire Booth Loose. And she didn't have any car, she came there in the cab, and midnight, the party broke up. And she asked me, uh, somebody suggested that I take Miss Luce home, which I proceeded. She got in the car with me, and we started, and it was kind of one of those foggy nights in Bel Air, and I couldn't find the place where she was living. So I finally got out of the car. There was a lamppost there, and she got on. And I started to climb up the lamppost, and there's big clumps of bushes around each lamppost in Bel Air. And I'm climbing up there looking for the name of the street, and just then Charlie Brackett, the writer, comes along. He walks his dog every night at midnight. <laughs> he comes along, he says, well, he says, I've seen everything, but I never thought I'd see Groucho Marx and the Italian ambassador in the bushes in Bel Air. <laughs>